Today we're going to talk about grow shelves and getting your seeds started for the spring. Welcome to another episode of Lonely Pines, you guys. Happy 2020. Hope everybody's off to a great start. We're super excited because we got a brand new grow shelf and we are raring to go. Yesterday I got a shipment of seeds in from Territorial Seed. Uh, a lot of our early, early crops. Uh, let's take a look at them and see what we've got going. So this year we decided to go back to Territorial Seed again. We had great luck with them last year. Uh, they are based out of Oregon and since we are on the Olympic Peninsula of Washington, they are relatively local. I do like supporting local when I can and it's nice to have harvested seeds that have seen the same type of weather conditions you're going to be growing them in. So feeling that's kind of important. Let's take a look at what we got. We got uh, some pak choy that we're going to be growing. It's the uh, Bo Pak F1. We do love that in our salads. Uh, I have not had a whole lot of luck with cauliflower. So this time I went ahead and got the snow crowns. Uh, they're supposed to be one of the easier cauliflowers to grow. So hopefully that is true. Kale. Kale is a huge winner in the greater Seattle area. This is a uh, prism. It's a very frilly and really a pretty good tasting kale. Uh, if you'd asked me five years ago if I like kale, I'd have told you definitely not, but now we do. Uh, my big thing that I've been waiting on all winter long is my onion seeds. So we got uh, ruby rings for our reds and Patterson's for our whites and ramrods for our scallions. Uh, I went ahead and ordered two ounces or excuse me two grams of both the ruby rings and the Patterson's and four grams of the ramrods. So we're going to be looking at uh, hopefully about 800 seedlets here in a little while. So before we can plant any of those seeds, we need to have a place to get them started. And unfortunately outside right now it's about 39 degrees. Uh, I do have a cold frame built out there, but this seed starting shelf is definitely a lot warmer and a lot more productive than outside right now. So we picked this shelf up at Home Depot. It is $97. It is a six shelf unit. It's capable of holding 175 pounds per shelf, I believe. Got some unpacking to do there on the bottom yet, but we're getting there. Uh, and it also holds two flats side by side very, very nicely. So this shelf is working out fantastic for us. One thing to consider when you set your shelving unit up is to make sure that your shelves are the proper distance from your lights. So a lot of problems people have is they are way too far away from their lighting. As you can tell here, this is only about two inches from the surface of the soil to the lights. Some people might say that's really, really hot, but it's not. You can actually reach up there and touch the bulbs and they're just barely warm. So it does create a great warm environment for your seeds to start, but you won't burn them. You don't have to worry about that. So these are just standard 40 watt shop lights that we have in here. I've got two of them on each shelf here. So I'm working with four bulbs. Last year, I only had one light down the middle of the shelf and the plants in the middle of the tray did fantastic. The ones on the outside were definitely reaching for light. So we've changed things up this year. So then once those seeds do start, you want to be able to lower them so they're not up against the lights completely. So that's where we get into our second shelf. Our second shelf, if you can see, is a different style of light. This is a feet electric grow light. They're two feet long. You have to have four of them to get the same amount of coverage as I did up above with the fluorescence. I'm not a huge fan of that, but they appear to be good lights. I've used them last year, had great success with them, and they seem to be doing pretty well this year as well. So the way I typically use our shelving is plant our first flat of seeds up on top, and they don't really need light. They just need warmth and moisture to get started, except for a few things like maybe lavender or something um, that need to be cold stratified. Most seeds don't need light to germinate, just moisture and warmth. We put those in the top 
and they get the warmth from the fluorescence underneath. I don't use a heating mat at all. Um, and we've had great success, as you can tell from the ones that are growing already here. So once they significantly start to pop, and by that I mean maybe half of your tray, you can really see it, I put it immediately underneath the fluorescent lights. And I will leave them there until they grow to the point where they're pretty much touching. Um, it does not hurt the seeds to have them up that high, and the plants are doing very, very well. Once they reach that stage, then I drop them down to the second layer and again try to keep about two inches of space between your leaf growth and your light source. Some people will say they just germinate in front of the window or whatever and, and you can do that. There's a, there's a thousand ways to do everything, right? Don't have to do it a particular way. Not everybody is right. Not everybody is wrong. But I can tell you that that window right there is only getting about 10 hours of light this time of year and most of the time it's not even sunlight. Today it's raining and it's gray and overcast. So your plants really need and would benefit hugely from having 15, 16 hours of daylight. So if you can provide that by artificial means, you're way ahead of the game. Well this is our old grow show. Um, it was a four shelf, also bought from Home Depot. It was probably 50 bucks. It's just plastic. It does hold a good amount of weight, but that's not the most important thing when you're growing seeds. The problem that I had with it was one, the shelves are not adjustable. They are fixed by those poles. And so whenever we had our lighting across the top, if we wanted to start seeds, we had the seeds way down here and had to put a box across just to get them up to the proper height. Hi, Diesel. Do you want to be on camera? How you doing, buddy? Today's a good day. Say hi to everybody. Hi. <laughs> he wants to play. I got to take him out and run here in a little bit. Uh, the other thing, come over here. Come on. Come on. The other thing I did not like about it, and the underneath is very irregularly shaped, and it was very difficult to get our lights to hang there well. Uh, plus, it's not a four full feet wide, so the lights were hanging out the edge. I ended up having to put a couple pieces of fence board across the shelving unit itself just to be able to support our trays. So just too small, too cumbersome, and they look a whole lot better once Laura has her hands on them and decorates them. Aha! Score me some bonus points. Now in regard to fastening the lights, lots of different ways to do it again. What I ended up doing was taking some baling wire and just going through the fluorescent lights and just go around the top and twist tie it off. So that worked great for the fluorescents themselves. For these other feet grow lights themselves, I ended up having to take a piece of baling wire all the way across the top and then it goes underneath and supports the actual frame of the lights. I don't want it on the light itself. They are a polycarbonate, but uh, they shouldn't break, but still I just wanted it to be more supported than that. So they're pretty easy to put up. They take a very low amount of electricity. Definitely worth it compared to just starting in a window or trying to start in a cold frame outside. Uh, we're not lucky enough to have a grow, uh, excuse me, a greenhouse yet, but one of these days soon. <clears throat> so this is what we're working with this year. So we've done real well with our germination this year. We've got probably a 90% success. The only issue that we're having so far is the mesclin mix. And from the looks of things with just the three seeds popping up there, I'm gonna guess that uh, our seed is probably old. So these are all last year's seeds. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't grow from last year's seed, because you certainly can, but they do get old in time. Some seeds will last longer depending upon how they were stored as well. Our newest babies are doing really well as well. We have some a lot of flowers going up there. We're anticipating getting bees this spring and I want to get a head start on our flower, flower growing. So I have uh, snapdragons and calendula, zinnias, uh, I threw in some cilantro there because I'm jonesing for some Mexican food, uh, some more spinach. And then our lavender. And who knew lavender 
needs to be cold stratified to start. So to the best of my knowledge, there's not a whole lot of seeds that need to be cold stratified. Uh, I'm just learning about this process myself, made the mistake on the lavender seeds and want to make sure that those get popping. Um, so stratification basically is where a seed is used to being out all winter and it needs that cold snap to get it to start growing in the spring. So we're going to bag up some lavender and put them in the fridge for a week or two. Um, and then bring them out and see if they don't do better. So, but just about everything else can be started right here. All right, so I hope this was uh, short and sweet for you and answered a few questions, at least about what we're doing right now, second week of January. Um, if your lights are too far away from your starts, believe me, you want them close. Uh, I'm sure there are hotter bulbs out there, so do do the touch test. But for the most part, if you're just re using a regular grow light, or a standard fluorescent light. Uh, this is the kind of spacing that you need. And again, there's a hundred different ways of doing things. Everybody has different shelving. I'm sure many of you have made your own. I actually considered making our own because uh, as a contractor, I do fairly often have leftover supplies and materials that I could build a grow shelf out of. But we just decided to bite the bullet this year and get a good solid grow shelf. It's gonna be with us forever. And if we ever quit growing, we can use it for storage maybe onions and garlic. <laughs> so I just wanted to thank all you guys for watching our videos. Like I say, there's a thousand people out there doing the same thing and your support means a lot to us. Um, I don't claim to be an expert or know all there is to know. In fact, the more I learn about growing, the more I learn I don't know anything. <laughs> so appreciate all your feedback, your comments, suggestions. Uh, like and follow down below. You can find us on all the social media sites. We're even on TikTok now. I don't even know what that is. That's Laura's deal. <laughs> Thanks for watching, you guys. Have a great day and happy growing.